Welcome back to the gallery for this, the first of our meetings with the candidates. Can we have a welcome back to our panel? <laughs> Uh, obviously, there's one person missing from this panel today, and that is Deputy Brenda Keneally, Judge of Park Committee. He couldn't be with us. He will be with Ian tonight in Dungarvan. You can hear his contributions to this debate on Ian's programme tomorrow. Our next question comes from Marie Gannon, who's the principal of the Butlerstown National School, and she's an INTO member. Uh, good evening, and my question for the panel is If elected to government, will you maintain the Croke Park Agreement unconditionally? John. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, if I could, first of all, uh, make the point that, um, and I've made this point on a number of occasions, and uh, I'm just referring back to the last question, but it's relevant to the question that was there. Uh, when somebody spoke, we were talking about 450,000 people unemployed, we're talking about the prospect of maybe another 30,000, according to Fine Gael, losing their jobs, uh, either by stent, by uh, being made redundant, or being forced out of their jobs. It's okay sustaining jobs, but we have to sustain jobs at reasonable rates of pay. And it's very simple. Our economy will function if people can spend in their economy. But could you address the question? Yes, I'm addressing the question that we have to support any agreement that's made by the, the Congress of Trade Unions on the basis that they are quite reasonable agreements, giving people a reasonable rate of pay. That will boost their economy. We have to introduce spending, induce spending in their economy, not reduce spending by reducing... Uh, 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 people's uh, uh, paid to minimum wage or below minimum wage. The Croke Park, Park Agreement goes some way to do that, to keep uh, uh, trade unionists and people within the trade union movement and ordinary workers at a reasonable rate of pay. Because we go down the road of reducing rates of pay, there's no stimulus, we will, we will deflate our economy because people will not have the ability to spend. And the trade union movement are right. Uh, to negotiate that, that agreement, and I completely agree with the Croke Park Agreement. Okay, Ben Mitchell is just here. <laughs> I'm committed to, to supporting the, the Croke Park Agreement as well. Uh, I think it's very important that we have that togetherness, that we have that collectiveness, and immediate stability, I think, as well, it provides. I, I would urge a note of caution, however, because I, I do think we, we have to think about the wider situation as well. I think we have to look at our economy. I think we've got to look honestly about where it's going and whether, in fact, ultimately, it, it can head in the right direction. I think we, we do need to look at other systems as well and other ways of working forward. So it's in that context, yes, I would give it support uh, for immediate stabilization, but I would look at other avenues as well and other ways of working forward too. Can I bring in Joe, please? No. We respond to that. The other yeah. job, job, job <coughs> the workers' party. Certainly, we, we would be uh, all for the Croke Park Agreement because if we go back in time when we had a free for all, which was no good to anybody, we had strikes every every second day. No, we have a bit of stability with um, Jack O'Connor and his Croke Park uh, Agreement, and I would be in favour of continuing on uh, those lines because if we get into a free for all situation, we're going nowhere. We're in a, a bad situation at the moment, and we have to work together to get out of this situation. What do you think? Yeah, look, I, I just want to, like, I, I don't need to dictate to anybody. You all know in your own lives how bad this uh, economic crisis is. We're 200,000 million a year of overspending. If we don't address that, we're not going to have the money to continue paying for frontline services. This is a burden we won't be allowed to continue to carry for too much longer. And Fine Gael don't want to sack any frontline workers. We want to protect the frontline workers and introduce more jobs for younger people by finding efficiencies in the public service. Yes, we want the Crow Park Agreement to work, but we don't have a lot of time now for the full implementation of it. And if it's not implemented soon, it won't be Fine Gael will make the cuts. It will be the likes of the IMF, because we have to show them how we're either cutting the deficit or we're going to raise taxes. We want to keep taxes as low as possible to stimulate jobs. Just like that gentleman said, I'm hearing on a daily basis the amount of young people that are emigrating. Unless we start creating employment, become competitive again in this country, we're not going to create those jobs. So James Fine Gael's policies are all about creating jobs and keeping people working. James Ryan, on that question. As a member of Impact Trade Union and somebody who voted in favour of the Coke Park Agreement, I most certainly would uh, be in favour of maintaining it and I would commit 
to working uh, with the unions uh, to maintain and to implement the Crow Park Agreement. I think it, it's the only show in town at the moment uh, and I think it's important that when agreements are negotiated with trade union movement that they're honoured, but that they're honoured on both sides. Okay, can we come back to the questioner, please? Your response to that? No, David, it can be on everything. Oh. No, I'm, I'm very happy with the response. I'm delighted to hear that all of the respondents are happy to support the agreement. The agreement was negotiated fairly. It was negotiated between two parties, and any agreement like that should be upheld. I mean, there's talks with some parties of rev revising, reviewing agreements. If an agreement was between two parties, I think it should be upheld. And in terms of implementation, just to take up Paddy's part, Primary teachers are already implementing the terms of that agreement. We're working one hour extra week, 36 hours a year, which is six days extra year for less pay. So we can't be faulted in terms okay. of our implementation. Thank you for that. Now our next question comes from Kathleen Lee Hay. And we'll do a shot. Yeah. Sure. Hi, Consortium. Just um, a question, especially to the main parties, because as an island, and we're all islanders, we actually live on the, the most lucrative fishing grounds in Europe. And we have seen with 30 years, most of the, that fish going to foreign trawlers. Now, none of the main parties that I see have had decent, any decent policies in regard to job creation from the sea. We, at the moment, just raw fish coming into Ireland, going the back of a lorry and going to Europe, this is worth 125 million just in white fish, another 90 million in mackerel alone. That's 200 million of fish in the back of a lorry that's not processed in this country. I don't know if any Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael or anyone in 30 years has actually ever, ever, ever taken this industry seriously. Now, as an island, we should be ashamed of ourselves to think that we sit here talking about job creation when out the road you have places like Dunmore East, and small other little harbours and Helvig absolutely decimated, not because Europe has given us bad policies, but because we have very, very bad politicians who have gone to Europe and have not delivered the okay. goods for this country. David. Well, I, I, I agree with the question, and there's two issues to it. First of all, I don't believe the government properly stood up for fishermen in Europe and they gave away our quotas and sold away what was billions of euro of fish in terms of quotas which I think was a mistake and you pointed out some of the fishing villages 30 years on but the problem is we now have an over regulated system where fishermen just don't have opportunities I've spoken to many fishermen who have left have gone there isn't anything there go to Dunmore there's two boats left so I mean what we have at the moment has been destroyed because of very very bad policies and yet the government talks about the 2020 Food Harvest Report and the potential for that in terms of agri-food and yet we're not using the potential that we have as an island nation in terms of our fishing. But she's asking think, for your policy specifically. The policy so is, to, is to deregulate the sector on the one hand but also to make sure we stand up for Ireland. When politicians go to Europe and for a long number of years I think what's happened is that they've gone cap in hand and they have not properly defended the interests of Certainly fishermen, but Irish people generally, we got very, very bad treaties. The Lisbon Treaty, for example, they promised... No, except for that, she investment. wants your specific policies on fisheries. I've given the specific policies. That's straight policy. We want to make sure that we defend fisheries, uh, to, to the interests of fishermen in Europe first and foremost, but also to exploit the potential that exists domestically. And if fishermen are actually given the opportunity, then they, they need to be able to fish first and foremost. But they also need the same support as any other entrepreneur, whether it's employment supports or access to credit, to enable them to be able to fish because it is expensive. There's huge costs associated as well. So we can't, on the one hand, talk about the potential for either agriculture or fisheries if we don't make the investment. And the difficulty is on both fronts, they've left us down in Europe and they've left us down domestically. Okay, Seamus Ryan. Yeah, can I just bring this back to, to the local scene? As I said earlier, I was in Dunmore East yesterday. And one of the key issues that came up there, talking to some of the, the men that own the, the fishing trawlers, is the cost of putting a trawler out at sea, and the cost of fuel, for example, is a very important thing. And if this is James, I don't wish to be rude, but she wants your party specific policies on the fishing industry. Well, again, Billy, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say to you here is that the cost of doing business for 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 a fisher, fisherman and th those uh, that own fishing trawlers uh, is is exceptionally high, and our party are committed to reducing those costs. I mean, Eamon Gilmore was a former minister in this area and has had a very strong record in that area. And we can bring that expertise back to the table uh, if in government next week. Okay, thank you very much. Can you respond to that? 
Well, I would just like to say I still don't see any reason why our, local, our coastal communities would vote for Labour or Fianna Fáil or even our, our Fine Gael because I just don't think that, I don't see your policies, you, that's not telling me, we're a very high cost country anyway and I mean we have... Okay, very briefly, yeah. because you have mentioned Fine Gael, you probably does have right to reply. Sorry, Cody, yeah. yeah. No, I, as you can appreciate, uh, common fisheries policy is due to be renegotiated yes. and I just want to say, Fine Gael are best placed to negotiate on behalf of the Irish fishing industry because we are very close, obviously, with our European colleagues in the European People's Party, which is the majority party right across Europe. Give me and we three can work, yeah, why I'm going to yeah. vote. You, we can work with our alliances to, to get the best deal, our alliances in Europe, to get the best deal for Irish fishermen. As well as that, Fine Gael are the only party that are committed to introducing a sea fisheries bill that will decriminalise the, the minor sanctions that fishermen have to suffer. We're prepared to do that and we've said that up front. We will also remove a lot of the bureaucracy and li licensing issues around aquaculture, where there's huge potential. We are committed to removing a lot of that so that fishing and aquaculture can flourish in this country. Again. Okay, we're going to take a break. I'm oh, sorry, Dorian, Tommy, Craig, we're taking another break. Thank you very much.